United States, we are at the top of this pyramid of wealth. Um, we are living off of the labor of other, the cheap labor of the world. Um, we live on sustainable lifestyles, and we have kind of a posh understanding of what our happiness is. It has to include a lot of things that other folks around the world would find extraordinarily luxurious. And so I think we need to take a hard look at the way we're making our money, who, who it's coming from really, um, who's benefiting from it and who's paying uh, for it. Because I think what we would find if we really, if people really looked hard at their vocations and their jobs, to, they might find that they're not really benefiting the common good. And there might be something that they could do with their skills and their talents that would be both more fulfilling for them for themselves and also would benefit their community a lot more. Um, I think people don't want to hear that though and I, and I think we have a, a culture that's based on convenience and avoiding things that are hard and uh, you know um, and, and two the way that the capitalist structure is set up it forces people to work really really hard for not much money. Our wages are at depression level wages but we don't know it because of credit. We have all this credit available to us so we just keep charging things and taking out loans um, not realizing that we are, are drowning sort of in debt. Um, but that way we don't pay attention to the fact that we're not making much money, that we're not home with our kids for dinner, that we're not spending the time with our families that we need to be. How do you, how do you deal with that when you're at the bottom of this sort of really unhealthy, unsustainable chain of consumption? Um, you want people to stop consuming so much, and you want to learn how to produce more. Um, so that this kind of balances out and we're not so stuck in this. It's really gross. It's a really gross cycle. And it doesn't feel gross when you're at the top of it because you're just buying the stuff and throwing it away. Um, but there's a spiritual, I think, depravedness about that, um, about our society that continues to do that that's really unhealthy and causes a lot of the mental illnesses that we've talked about, depression, you know, isolation, things like that. Like, there's a lot of studies now about how people feel actually more isolated who are on Facebook. We, we've created this problem that we now see as a problem in terms of illegal immigration. We have this great demand for jobs up here. We've destroyed the economies of Central and South American folks. Um, we destroyed the cor corn you know, market by flooding their markets with our cheap subsidized corn and destroying their livelihoods when they were doing family-run farms and things like that. So they come up here looking for work and we're mad at them for taking our jobs when in fact we've destroyed their economies, forced them to leave their families. They have to come up here looking for work. They don't want to be here anymore, you know, than, than anyone else who would want to leave their family. And so it's, it's, it's an interesting problem that our multinational corporations and the corporations that run the government have created um, and done a brilliant job at having our population um, blame those who are actually victimized by these corporations, which is absurd, you know, so it's exporting greed and materialism and our eat waste, exporting that, exporting sweatshops, you know, so that they have to make this stuff get poisoned while they do it, make no money while they do it. The stuff goes back to the United States and then in five years comes back to them as pollution. Um, so it, it's, it's this great, great setup really for the corporations who sell this stuff. Um, and for the CEOs who are making the money, you know, and for those of us with privilege too, who don't feel like we can quite give those luxuries up, who feel like we have to have a cell phone. Like 10 years ago, no one had cell phones and we all like survived. It was amazing. You know, up here in the community room, we have a phone and we all used to share the phone and one internet line. It was, you know, the, the, the modems. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, that's outrageous to think about now. That's absolutely unfathomable to think about everyone not having their own phone. You know, and so what is our consciousness? How is it changing in terms of what we want, what we need and things like that? And so we're not just talking about like, it's just CEOs are bad, you know, just the lawmakers are bad. Like we are continuing to oppress people by consuming these things and not learning to produce other things. And look around, it's hard to find examples of, uh, of a good or a product that is, that in its creation and use is really a beneficial thing to to our species, mm -hmm. um, which is a little depressing. <laughs> uh, but it, it's because we're at the top of the pyramid. It's our responsibility to look for those the, for the products that are benefiting the world and to start to make them ourselves. I think because um, we have more of a responsibility because we are doing the oppressive.